This is the first video in the Chemistry Key Skills series for the new Edexcel Separate Science and Combined Science GCSE courses based on grades 9 to 1. In this first video, we will be looking over atoms. In this video, we will be looking over the structure of the atom. We will look at the parts of an atom and be able to compare their mass, their size and their charge. And finally, we will look at the model of the atom, how this has changed and the work by John Dalton. Our big question for today is to be able to draw an atom of chlorine 35, showing the protons, neutrons and electrons, making sure we can also label the nucleus as well as the shells. So what are atoms? Atoms make up everything. Everything that surrounds us is made up of different types of atoms. Atoms themselves are made up of three subatomic particles that you need to be able to identify. These are protons, neutrons and electrons. We will look at protons, neutrons and electrons in a bit more detail on the following slide. However, for now, protons and neutrons are found inside the nucleus of the atom. That's where most of the mass of the atom is found. Electrons, on the other hand, go around the outside in shells. Protons are positive, neutrons are neutral and electrons are negative. All atoms are neutrally charged. This means that in an atom, you have the same number of protons as you do electrons. This gives us a neutral charge overall. For each of these subatomic particles, you need to know their name, their mass, their charge and their location. So protons have a mass of 1. They have a charge of plus 1. They are the positive subatomic particle. And as we mentioned on the previous slide, they are found in the nucleus, in the centre of the atom. Also found in the nucleus are the neutrons. They also have a mass of 1. However, they do not have a charge. They are neutral. Finally, you have electrons, who are found in shells orbiting the nucleus. Unlike protons, they have a negative charge. They have a negative charge of minus one, giving each atom a neutral charge. They have a mass of one over 2,000, or 0.0005. It's an incredibly small particle. A popular GCSE exam question is to compare the masses, charges, and the locations of these three subatomic particles. When we look at the periodic table, as we will do in video two in this series, you will see that each element has two numbers next to it. These are the atomic number and the atomic mass. The atomic number is the one at the bottom. This tells us the number of protons that the atom has. It also tells us the number of electrons that are found in an atom of the element. The mass number, on the other hand, is the number at the top of the element's name. This tells us the number of protons and neutrons found in the atom. In order to calculate the number of neutrons, we can then simply take the atomic number away from the atomic mass to give us the number of neutrons. So for helium, which has an atomic mass of 4 and an atomic number of 2, we can see that it has 2 protons. If we take the protons away from the atomic mass, this gives us 2 neutrons. The model of the atom that we've been using to look at, where we've got protons and neutrons inside the nucleus and electrons around the outside in shells, hasn't always been that way. In fact, there have been several different models of the atom, and for your GCSE, you need to be able to compare them and show how the structure changed over time. This means we need to journey all the way back to ancient Greece, where the first ideas of atoms started to be put together. The word atom comes from the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. So it was the smallest possible particle. 
Democrates believed that everything was made up of smaller particles. The smallest of these was the atom, which couldn't be divided. Obviously, nowadays, we know that the atom does have even smaller particles in it, such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. However, he believed that they were the smallest particle. His ideas wouldn't really be looked at again until the start of the 19th century with John Dalton. At the beginning of the 19th century, John Dalton started to look into atoms. He described these as a solid sphere. And he also said that different types of these spheres made up the different elements that they knew about. He also investigated atomic mass. So here we have water, H2O, with a mass of 18. He suggested that this was made up of three solid spheres, the first of which had 16 mass units and two additional ones of one mass unit each, giving us the 18 mass units of water. By the late 19th century, J.J. Thompson took these ideas on further. He was able to show that atoms were not made up of a solid sphere but rather that there was an overall positively charged area with much smaller negatively charged particles that he called electrons. He changed this to what is known as the plum pudding model, where we have a positively charged pudding and then the negative charged electrons kind of studded into it like they are fruit. Only eight years later, this plum pudding model was changed once again, this time by Ernest Rutherford. Ernest Rutherford carried out a gold foil experiment where he fired positively charged alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold. This gold foil experiment was designed in order to test the plum pudding model. It was expected that the particles of each atom would pass straight through the sheet or they may have been deflected very slightly because most of the positive charge of each atom was thought to be very, very spread out in that pudding that we looked at on the previous slide. However, although most of the particles did go through, lots of them were deflected and some were even deflected backwards. This meant that the plum pudding model couldn't be wrong. Rutherford came up with a new theory. He suggested that the positive charged particles occupied a space in the middle of the atom, known as the nucleus. He also suggested that electrons orbited around the outside. This meant that most of the atom is actually made up of empty space. Scientists realised that the electrons in the way that Rutherford had explained them would be too closely attracted to the nucleus, making the atom collapse in on itself. Therefore, a new model had to be created. Niels Bohr proposed this model, which we now use today, where the electrons were contained in shells. Bohr suggested that electrons can only exist within their fixed orbitals or shells. Each shell has a fixed energy. This prevents the electrons from being attracted to the nucleus. His theory was backed up by lots of evidence and it was able to be tested by multiple other scientists. This model has since been further adjusted into the quantum mechanic model that we use today. However, it is important that you are able to draw all four models that we have just looked at. So that includes Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford and Bohr. As we can see, the model of the structure of the atom has changed many times over the last 200 years, starting with Dalton's billiard ball model, moving on to Thompson's plum pudding model, through Rutherford and Bohr's model, and then today into the quantum mechanic model. At the beginning of this tutorial, we set out to be able to describe the structure of the atom, identify the parts of an atom and be able to compare their mass, size and charge, and finally look at how Dalton's model of an atom has changed over time. To finish with, I want you to have a go at the big question. 
So I want you to draw an atom of 3517 chlorine showing the protons, neutrons and electrons, labelling the nucleus and the shells. For your diagram, you should have 17 protons. This comes from the atomic number of 17. As this is an atom of chlorine, it will also have 17 electrons. We will look at electron configuration in the next video in this series. However, the electron configuration for chlorine 35 would be 287. Finally, we have our neutrons. To calculate our number of neutrons, we need to take our atomic number of 17 away from our atomic mass of 35. This gives us 80 neutrons found in the nucleus. In the next video in this series of the key concepts of chemistry, we will look at the periodic table, electronic configuration, isotopes and relative atomic mass.